Obvious. Killer targeted women, New South Wales Police Commissioner Karen Webb says. The majority of people killed and injured at Bondi Junction on Saturday were women with police pointing to an obvious pattern. So for those of you who aren't aware, you might be somewhere else other than Australia. Over the weekend on Saturday, a man decided to go on a murderous rampage at a shopping centre, killing six people, even targeting a baby who by all accounts, is on the men, but unfortunately, her mother is no longer with us. Police say it's obvious from footage that Joel Couchy targeted women in Saturday's horrific shopping centre attack. Five women died, plus one male security guard, and the nation wants to know what drove Couchy's horrific attack at Bondi Junction, Westfield, on Saturday. New South Wales Police Commissioner Karen Webb said it was obvious to her and detectives that Couchy had focus on women and avoided men during the attack. The video speaks for themselves, don't they? That's certainly a line of inquiry for us. It's obvious to me, it's obvious to the detectives, that it seems to be an area of interest that the offender had focused on women and avoided the men, Ms Webb told ABC News Breakfast. I am going to come back to that because she's not wrong. But I just want to talk real quick about the response that was seen especially in the online sphere here in Australia, where as soon as word got out that this was happening, one of the things that happened very quickly was the finger pointing, where everyone wanted to know who the perpetrator was and what was his background, where we had people on one side of the aisle saying that it was Islamic terrorism, and then we had people on the other side of the aisle saying, no, it's, it's Israeli terrorism because the area in which it happened happens to be predominantly Jewish. But you could see why those two narratives popped up, plus a whole bunch of others. A man was identified by this online discourse, which was then picked up by one of the major news outlets, one of the trusted outlets, and named him, this person, Uh, was not the attacker and his name got thrown around everywhere and his life basically went to hell for a good 48 hours. So I think he's now suing uh, the news corporations that did publish his name without proper vetting of the events. Now, when it comes to the online sphere, they're not the trusted news sources. So the trusted news sources should know better to print a name without getting verification from the police on the identity of the attacker. So basically, this is exactly what the online sphere here in Australia turned into for a good 24 hours until we knew exactly who the perpetrator was. Everyone was pointing the finger at each other, which doesn't help anything at all, because it just showed how polarised we are. Look, I had my suspicions as well. I was following what was going on. I was noticing a pattern and I was just putting that pattern to other events that has happened not only here in Australia, but all over Western countries. I had my suspicions, but I wasn't going to make them public because that would be a stupid thing to do. I sat back and I waited as best I could. I was trawling through as much information as I could to see what the real story was until we finally found out. Like it was really horrible that there were were accounts that I considered that I trusted were just blatantly coming out and going, yep, it is. It's got to be Islam. Has to be. And they're in other countries. I'm like, how the hell would you know that? So it sort of made me go, you know, you've shaken up a bit of my trust there. And then there were the accounts who were basically coming out going, yeah, it was the Jews. And for me, I had to roll my eyes immediately because this is all these people would say. It's always the Jews, always the Jews. So I couldn't help but feel somewhat, you know, disgusted by it all and how how quickly everyone was to finger point. And then when we found out who the perpetrator was, It was really bizarre to see the reaction from that same group of people because there was this sort of sick victory lap that they were doing going, see, 
We told you, all you racists who were saying that it was Islam, racist, racist, racist. It was white men. White men are the problem here in this country. White, 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 white. Failing to realize that they are doing the exact thing that they are accusing those of. See, the difference is Islam isn't a race. But here they were proudly proclaiming, white men are the problem in this country. It's got to be white men. White men, white men, without sort of, you know, looking into the whole uh, per capita thing, disproportionate uh, offenders. But that is another video for another time. Now, I just want to go back to what uh, Miss Karen Webb said here, the New South Wales Police Commissioner. The video speaks for themselves, don't they? They certainly a line of inquiry. That's certainly a line of inquiry for us. It's obvious to me. It's obvious to the detectives that it seems to be an area of interest that the offender had focused on women, and avoided the men. Excuse me, and avoided the men. Miss Webb said. Now, she's not wrong there. If you do watch the footage of uh, the offender going through the mall, any time he approached a man and that man would stand up to him, would square up to him, uh, he would then back off very quickly and then make his way to his next victim as such. Well, to somebody that he would find. So what it was, was this man is a coward. And yes, he was targeting women because he saw them as an easy target. Hence why I said earlier in the video that he even went after I believe it was a nine-month-old baby. But this has now turned into the new narrative push that I've suddenly seen where it's men are the problem. Violence against women perpetrated by men. That's the issue here. That's what we've got to talk about. We still have no concrete evidence of what his true motives were. I was watching the news where they were speaking to a couple of the men who actually did square up to the offender, who was there when the offender was shot by a police officer. They said something really interesting during their interview. They said that his eyes were black. Now, what does that usually mean when somebody's eyes would be black, especially when you're in a place like a mall that it is heavily lit by... Um, by by lighting and all that sort of stuff. Usually when you're in those sort of situations, your pupils will contract. So as you can probably see mine at the moment, they're very, very tiny because I've got a bright light shining my eyes. So what would it mean when somebody's pupils are so dilated like that that their eyes would look black? Well, Occam's razor would tell you that he was on some sort of substance, but that's only a guess from me for now because we haven't got a toxicology report. But if I'm going to put a guess out there, my guess is that he was on something that caused a psychoactive uh, breakdown. But I don't know. That was my guess, and I'm only going off a witness report. See, they're going through a traumatic experience themselves. So maybe they misinterpret what they saw. Their adrenaline's rushing. They see things differently. I'm just going off what they said. His eyes were black. But let's go back to the narrative that is now being pushed. That this is a violence against women problem perpetrated by men. During that same interview with those witnesses, the female host of the news program kept trying to push that line and the, uh, the what do you, uh, the witnesses were basically saying he was running up to a lot of people and if anyone seemed bigger than him or if uh, they squared up to him, he would then move on, which just goes back to my point that this man was just a total coward looking to inflict as much damage as he possibly can, whether or not it was his direct motive to go out there and specifically target women. We don't know. Yes, the majority of women were his targets, but as they said, he was going after people who weren't intimidating to him, even though he had a knife. So where do we go through from here? Well, for me, I, I, I have somewhat of a solution. 
a way to move forward so women don't have to feel threatened when they go to the shops, when they go for a walk, when they're just out and about. But my solution is not wanted by people. I actually spoke about it. Ironically, it was one year to the date that the attack happened. In this video here, and I'll leave a link in the description below, I spoke about how the Australian laws that the Americans seem to always go on about when it comes to guns, etc., uh, won't work for them. In that video, I said that eventually we are going to get an attack here in Australia. This one wasn't with a gun, it was with a knife. And I pointed out the fact that Australians are unarmed and they're vulnerable. And this attack that happened at this shopping centre here in Sydney, Australia, just cemented what I said. People are unarmed here in Australia and they are vulnerable. And the interesting thing about it was the actual hero that came out of this whole event was this lady right here, Inspector Scott. So she ran along with a couple of other men towards the danger. She told him to drop it. He refused. He lunged at her. She put a couple in his chest and that was the end of him. The interesting thing I find about this is there is the prime example about how the women of this country could defend themselves. At this very moment, the women of this country can't even carry pepper spray. But there is a clear indication for all the women to see and for all the women of Australia who are currently praising her and she deserves our praise, seeing how it is that we could avoid these situations for other women, for them to be armed. And I can hear it already. People are angry at me for dare suggesting that we have the ability to carry firearms. But there it is. There is your evidence that this is what the Australian public need because in situations like this, when seconds matter, the cops are minutes away. She got there very quick, but still quite a few minutes had passed, enough for him to stab uh, quite a few uh, number of people. Six died, but he, he, he got... He got quite a few. Our Prime Minister came out and said, thank God he didn't have a gun. And in that same video, I pointed out that there is nothing, nothing stopping anyone here in Australia, as we speak, from getting a gun and doing that, what that guy did with a gun. There's nothing stopping them. If they wanted to, they could do it. And I'm going to make the same prediction again. It's coming. And the Australians are unarmed. All we're hearing for at the moment is uh, we need more police officers and we need armed security guards. You are advocating to putting the responsibility of your safety into other people's hands where they can't be there all the time. Your safety is your personal responsibility. We saw it in this article. Aussies defend gun laws after Bondi Junction massacre. Aussies have hit back at gun supporters in the US claimed open carry laws could have prevented the deadly Bondi Westfield stabbing spree. It could have. An armed society is a polite society. Okay, let me hear all the, th all the nonsense about how there's multiple mass shootings in, in the United States. Where are the majority of them happening? They're happening in places where there are gun bans, similar to us here in Australia. Again, it's a different culture. They've got more population. They've had it for a hell of a lot. Uh, they've had guns in their culture for a hell of a lot longer than we have. But we are getting to that point. We are going down the same path. Eventually, someone here in the country is going to snap. They are going to be able to find a firearm, and they are going to be able to do. The unthinkable, 
for Australians. And we're all going to sit there again with our shocked Pikachu faces going, how could this have happened? How could he get so many people? Why couldn't the cops be there on time? Why wasn't the security guards armed? When the answer should have been that the good guys with the guns could have stopped them. Knowing that people around you are concealed or open carried, you ain't going to try shit. That's why in a lot of the states that have open carry over there in the United States, open and concealed carry, you don't see a lot of this gun violence because people go around knowing, I ain't going to fuck with anyone because they could be armed. And a lot of the times when somebody does try to fuck with people, that good guy with the gun puts them down real quick. Look, I don't have all the answers. I'm just looking at a situation thinking to myself, how could this be avoided? And you know what? I don't know. I, 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 don't, have, I don't have the answers. But, I, but I'm seeing the decline of our society. I see a road that we are going down. And again, I see the inevitable happening. But I see Australians not wanting to take the responsibility for their own safety. And I just throw my hands up in the air and go, well, what are we going to do? We're just going to keep going through this over and over and over again. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It only took a year from my last prediction for it to happen. You wait. Someone's going to see what's happened here in Bondi. They're going to get their head all messed up. They're going to do something as well. My thoughts are with that little baby, though. Hopefully she comes out on the other side. Well, and the father, the grandparents, whoever else is around has all the support that they need. All right, mate. Thanks for checking out the channel and this video. Follow me up there. Do the things down there. Are we done? Yeah, we're done.